What is going on guys, today we are here with another ranking video and it is going to be the best midfielders in FIFA 23 and most definitely we've got a lot to get through. So first on that list is going to be our man Zachariah, he's the new transferred Chelsea player, honestly still coming in at 11,000 coins which normally indicates one of two things, either A he's very hard to get, maybe not packable or He's still good in the game. 81 CDM, looking very, very nice with his lengthy attribute. And again, he's got the solid stats. He's cheap. 10, 11 K for a CDM right now is good value for your book. At the minute, I'm going to put him in the B category because we do have, as we can imagine, some absolute bangers in this. And I feel like he's not going to kind of live up to the hype of a Hullet. But in terms of the 10 K value... Not a bad card. Next up is Barella, the 86 centre mid for Inter. Again, a solid card coming in at 15,000 coins. And I feel like he's the sort of player that eventually with more upgrades, he's going to be even better and better. He hasn't quite got the 80 overall on everything, but it's definitely close. And you probably will be able to see that within the next probably two to three upgrades, I could imagine. So most definitely coming in free, free, 15k, no lengthy attributes, but a solid base stats throughout, and he's going to sit there next to Zachariah. We're going to go through two now, and it is two that I think people will probably look over a little bit, but most definitely are players that can do a job, and that is going to be Arman Casemiro and Fabinho, both Brazilian CDMs, both of them with the lengthy trait, and I think that is what saves them in this game, purely for the fact that 63 and 66 pace in any other FIFA pretty much would be laughed at. You wouldn't want that in your CDM role. You want 80 plus. You want to make sure that they've got that pace. But the lengthy attribute adds so much value to them. Because you can obviously go with the shadow with Fabinho. And I think he's 17,000 coins. I don't know if I can find Casemiro in the amount of lists. He's right here. He is lengthy as well. So both of them can have the shadow. Which would take Casemiro up to 71. And it would take Fabinho up to 80. 74 quick maths but that then adds value to the defense and makes them a relatively decent card i'm not saying they are top end cdms but most definitely better than what your original face value would be into the first special now a left wing left mid gakpo honestly really enjoyed this card i'm just going to put him there for the moment a controlled player that can't go lengthy but what he offers is a very good attacking play he is more left wing in how i play with him but obviously he can go left mid as well so i thought it's got to be included with this coming in at 24,000 coins i believe the sbc is still there until the 4th of november so you've got plenty of time and again is going to be in this B category there's going to be a lot of solid players in the B it's going to be C's and D's which really are the players that are just more fodder and then A's and S's are going to be more expensive higher rated as you can imagine and talking about that we're going into one of them right now and it's going to be Mason Mount unfortunately for this card I'm just not a fan. I, I don't know. Cams this year just haven't quite took my fancy yet. A couple of them. Fakir being one of them. But I think it is the more expensive ones that most definitely, as you could imagine, are doing better. But in terms of just generic cams, your Brunos, your Mounts, your Havertz in cam, I've just not been able to work with them very well. I am playing the solid two CMs and strikers. So again, the formation doesn't really offer a cam value. But even when I've gone for the 4 3 3 I've just not been a massive fan of Mount. And one of the big youngsters up next, if we can find him in this big old list, it's going to be our man Pedri, a centre mid 86. He is absolutely brilliant on this game. And most definitely, if we see increase after increase with him, he's going to be a fan favourite in that La Liga, especially with his stats coming in quite nice. I would like a bit of an increase on his defending and attacking. Hopefully, a off-promo non-inform, like a, a rule breakers, for instance, would really, really sort that out with some major upgrades into evil one of them because if you can get more defense and then maybe go with a hunter on him you've got an absolutely sensational card at the minute i'm going to sit him in in the b category again we're going to go through the s's in a second so strap in so the final gold card before we get into the s tier and just clean up a bit of this list because there's some obvious ones we are looking for the portuguese cam who is now higher rated than uh, uh, bruno bernardo silva is here and i think most definitely a solid card in the game he most definitely is a better cam and i think it's down personally to the 94 agility 92 balance only coming in at 23k which is really nice i think for me he just offers a very good agile work 
great. And that, again, can be the, the big thing with a cam is that left stick dribbling. That's going to be massive. He's got a four-star skill. If you get any five fours, then they're going to be absolutely fantastic. So I've added some cards into the ST already. As we can imagine, they are the, the fan favorites. Zidane, Vieira, Hullet, millions of millions of coins. Marquisio, we did a review on yesterday. So if you want to check that out, again, an unreal player. 600 and some thousand coins still. Again, immense, especially in the new hero version. Would love the dynamic, this one, uh, instead of that being the World Cup. But we'll get to them in November. Matthias, 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 Ronaldinho, Ginola, Conte, Kessi, Kaka. All S-tier category and most definitely... One of the most I've seen used, um, especially Kessi, Kante. I've seen Ginola a handful of times now. Kaka's now starting to creep up as well. Linkovic Savic up next. Again, a nice centre mid, starting off as an 86. Got himself into that 87 now. 27,000 coins still, obviously an 87. So he's going to be a little bit more of a price with informs being required. But in terms of the card... It's not bad. You've got Lenfi already on him. I would probably say he's going to be our first A category right now. Most definitely coming in with that great chemistry style. You can go with either the Shadow, Engine, uh, Hunter, Anchor. You can do whatever and he will stay in that Lenfi category, which I think as a centre mid definitely holds really good weight. Muller is up next. I've seen him somewhere. 88 Muller. We'll just put him there for the moment. He's 41,000 coins. He is an 88 cam. Again, no Lenfi on him but what he offers is not really a lot to be honest well his shooting is pretty good pace is a little bit subpar passing wise looking good dribbling good on the bottom end agility balance not quite there personally for me i feel like he's in the cross between c and b i'm gonna put him in c for the moment just because he doesn't give you what you kind of need in this game. First things I look for, look for, especially with new gen, is lengthy. That, unfortunately, is the meta. It might change. It might not. Then I look for, if he is controlled or explosive, I'd look for agility balance because I know the left stick dribbling is going to be good. If he did have, say, 90 agility and then really good passing, I know he's going to be able to turn and move the play. Unfortunately, he doesn't have that. So, really... The only thing that you can go with him is getting them kind of set up shots outside the box. And in comparison to a lot of people who are going to be in B and A, it's just not enough. Lorente is up next and a cracking centre mid. Still 48,000 coins being an 84. I think arguably I'm going to put him in A. I think if your card is 84 rated, in fact, no. No, if he's 84 rated and he's still 48,000 coins, you know that that card is very much wanted. He can't be lengthy, but he has 88 pace already. Dribbling-wise is looking good, good agility, balance is a little bit poor, he's got good passing, you're looking for the chem style anchor which will obviously increase his uh, pace as well as his defended and physical and turns him into an 85 DM or an 84 CM. Goretzka up next, somebody who actually is in my team and most definitely a fantastic card with 53,000 coins as his value. Honestly, really, really happy with this card. He's very balanced going forwards and back. Um, obviously, he can be lengthy with the anchor, which again adds the value to him. At the minute, I've been enjoying him. I think he's a solid card for a gold card. And for that reason... We're going S tier. Havertz is up next. Uh, normally a striker, but he can go cam and centre forward. And I personally would put him more in the cam role than actually in the uh, kind of centre um, striker role. Purely for the fact that I like him in that link up. A little bit better than Mount in my opinion. His stats do show it. He is controlled with no lengthy option. But he has a bit of agility balance. Nothing too crazy. Composure's good. Passing's good. Your shooting can definitely do with a bit of work. But I'm, I'm assuming ju just from the chemistry style alone. You go with the engine. Obviously to get the agility balance up a little bit. You get a bit more pace. 90 dribbling on the overall. And passing. I think for me he's just that slight bit better than Mount. But both are very very close to each other. I think they're just at one level above. Another cracking gold card right here. A center mid 87 De Jong. What a fantastic little unit this guy is. 64,000. A little bit more than Goretzka. And most definitely worth every penny. He picks the ball up. He grabs it from the defense. And he can take it all the way to the midfield. Isn't lengthy. 
but I think the actual attributes that he's got really work very highly in his favor. He's got high agility, which normally with a controlled work means that he is quick at turning, he can get the pass off, and is most definitely a great box to box in your team. Robert Tony is next, the new rule breaker from yesterday. We did again a review on the channel, so if you want to check that out after this, you can see what I liked about this card. And most definitely, as an 84, 72,000 coins still, which is held his price really nicely. We bought him, I think, at 63, sold him at 81, managed to then obviously keep his price by only losing 10k. That normally tells you a pretty good amount about the card, and most definitely in that A tier with his four star, four star. We then go on to Nkunku, a cracking little cam, a massive upgrade as we mentioned in the previous one, most definitely coming in at a high value of 86,000 coins, which is incredible, is a cam center forward or striker. Personally, I have seen him at striker a few times, and honestly, I thought he was going to be more of a cam, so I feel like there is the option for both. No lengthy on him, so I'm surprised that he's kept this sort of value, so the pace, the dribbling, the passing must be working really well for this card. Most definitely coming in in that S tier right now. I think chem style people are looking at is that hunter to max out that shooting and obviously uh, the pace that you can get, which gives him 96 pace and 87 shooting. I think... Obviously, you've got to try him out. I can't wait for his first in form. Hopefully, we get that big bust that we got last year where it just in form after in form and we can see ourselves a 90 and Kunku before too long. Into the Europa cards, we have our man Odengard now, a cracking little 86 cam right now. We've got an 89 rate, uh, 89,000 coin card coming in with a nice upgrade if they do manage to go through the Europa. I think they are on track, I want to say. I don't personally follow the Europa as much, but I believe they are on track to do it. Again, a nice card, 86, could go up to 87, and then I think if they, yeah, they get two upgrades, 87 for the two wins, and 88 if they manage to go through as well, which is absolutely perfect for this card, as that would be a really nice upgrade for him. Going from his 84, double upgrade to the 86, I think most definitely coming in as that A category. Modric is up next, the center mid that just keeps going. Honestly, this card is just a wonderful, wonderful card. 89 rated, he's gone up plus one, so his gold card is sitting around the same sort of level. Um, I think passing-wise, is there's no one better. Obviously has a massive amount of agility balance. Not necessarily your standard either really high attacking or really defensive. He's very much like the Xavi, like the Perlo, um, Gerard to some extent. You are going to have somebody who can pass the ball out, give you options, can get up and down the field. He doesn't necessarily have that lengthy, but the agility and obviously the passing works really, really well to cut open defenses. Tushimeni next, a beautiful one to watch. We managed to get him in our uh, reward, not reward pack, our... Uh, pre-order pack and most definitely has been doing a service next to Kessie. I will say that I have preferred Kessie in the grand scheme of things, but Tushimeni, definitely one that you don't want to disregard. Still an 82, so both gold and one to watch will be the same value. Um, obviously, the one to watch is going to be more expensive because of the upgrades, but with this, you've got a lengthy anchor guy, and he is absolutely magical in that midfield. Lamar 86 coming up as the next Champions League road to the knockout. 117 still at the moment. Most definitely a nice center mid that you can get. Very, very odd for me. I really didn't expect him to be centre mid this year. Again, don't really follow La Liga through and through, so I, he could have been his new position. He can be centre mid, left mid, right mid, which offers so much versatility with him, especially in terms of making teams. I know the chemistry is different, but when you've got a potential of putting us two centre mids in and you need a left mid, right mid who can change into a centre mid, then most definitely you're looking at a fantastic card here that I personally think will go in to this A category. Dirk Kite the Hero, a beautiful card. Known him from way, way, way back when in terms of this card. He has been a, a Premier League legend, obviously Eredivisie as well. He is a fantastic hero, coming in with no lengthy, but he's 122k, which in hero standpoint is most definitely a nice card that can go into that A. Next, we've got Lampard and Gerrard. Two very consistent centre mids. Let's just whack them both up here so we can see them. In terms of both of them, they are very interesting icons. Both coming in at a relatively reasonable value. We've got Lampard at 155. And if I can find Gerard, he's got to be in the list somewhere. 
if we can find him. Batshuayi, where are we going? Luis Figo, Petit, Zanetti, Zambrota, Nedved, Baggio, Essien. He's got to be... There he is, Steven Gerrard. So, actually, Lampard's coming in at 155. Gerrard's coming in at 480. So... That does tell me a lot, but the main thing that you'll find the difference between is Gerard is a lengthy uh, centre mid with an architect. Lampard, unfortunately, can't be. So that is going to be where these differ, which for me, if we're looking at face value stats, we've got more pace on Gerard as well as being lengthy is going to be a double meta boost. We've then got more dribbling. We've got a little bit less shooting, but again, Gerard and Lampard, I'm expecting passing to be the main attribute for both of them, as well as then a little bit of defence, both of them not necessarily on that high end. I just think for me, Gerard's stats again this year just stand above Lampard in terms of the whole package. Rano is a new hero that is in the game and most definitely a cracking little addition. Again, Barcelona legend. Started, I don't know if he actually started at West Ham, but most definitely he was at West Ham at some point. He can be, well, he is originally a centre-back and a CDM as well. And most definitely we've used him as a centre-back in a review. So check that one out if you're looking for a defender. But in a CDM role, I think he could do it. He has the lengthy attribute. He can put the anchor on and get the 95 defended 91 physical. I would say I actually do prefer him as a centre-back. 5'9", so very much Cannavaro vibes. But I think if you're not necessarily wanting him as a centre-back there, he most definitely can play that CDM role very, very well. We've got the good pace at 80 with the lengthy 95 defending 91 physical. I'd say not a bad CDM, to be honest. Paqueta is up next with his conference road to the knockout. A lengthy cam that you can go with an architect. Unfortunately, doesn't necessarily have that massive pace bo uh, boost, which again will add value and not value because when you have to use an architect for the lengthy attribute, it does mean you miss out on any sort of pace from him. So you're kind of stuck in one way and stuck in the other. But I do think it still adds some good value to him. He's still coming in at 165, but the price is a little bit squiffed because you do have the chance of a double upgrade, which obviously will happen for West. So let's just put some of these gold cards in. Because we've got a few golds and a lot of icons to get through, we'll run through a lot of them a little bit more on the quick time. Bellingham, still a very nice card. Most definitely going into that B at the moment. Bruno, unfortunately, to be honest, I think Bruno could go into the fodder. Same with Cruz, not a big fan again this year. I think once we get a pace increase, that will add a lot of value to him. But at the minute... Unfortunately, he's just not there. Tonali, definitely coming in that A for an 84 gold. Still very relevant in the game today. Same with De Bruyne. Again, he just naturally has that focus as well as his inform. I'd actually put this one in S rather than A. I think it is a little bit of an upgrade that will put him into that meta spot where you can really get a good pass off him. 93 passing on the base on his gold card. 94 on the second. A most definite fantastic card. And I think we're pretty much caught up. We will just go with, obviously, Renato Sanchez. I think everybody's kind of uh, gathered again this year he is just top dollar as well as Rashford for me he's gone through phases Rashford I personally really enjoyed him to start with I thought he's he offers a lot can't be the lengthy but most definitely can still be left mid which is always a valued position to go for I have put Nunez over him up front now but I have definitely seen against him that he can still score goals against me. And then if we just pick through some of these icons, because there's going to be some that just aren't quite there, but most definitely there is still quite a few that will hit the main category. I think in this tier list, by the looks of it, we haven't got any of the really, really low-end tier left backs, uh, left backs, midfielders. So we are looking at probably, I'd say, at least B and above. So if we start kind of rattling through some of them, I think for me, Baggio is in A. Balak this year, I think if I can find him quickly, he is an absolute unit in that midfield. He's 89 rated. He's coming in at a whopping, here he is, if it loads, 580k. And that main, the main reason is lengthy. And what this vibe gives me is FIFA 19 vibes. Tall, fast, now added lengthy, strong and can shoot. That and defend to some extent, obviously. But with this card, he adds that trio again of the Balak, Vieira, Hullet gang. That is going to be the end goal for a lot of people, especially with the campaign moments. If we get, say, a 93 Balak, 
that's going to be absolutely nuts. Which leads us into Beckham. Again, some good points with Beckham. Definitely more of a cam this year again. But he's got to go in that B. Unfortunately, his actual card itself wouldn't necessarily rank himself in that uh, A or S. Desai. Always an S. You can never argue with that. Centre-back or CDM. He can play that role. Absolutely incredible. Same as uh, another counterpart from Chelsea. Essien is wonderful. His base is more expensive than his mid. So if you're wondering why we're not progressing with the mids rather than rating-wise, sometimes the base is better. Eusebio is a proven of that. Lam, again... He's just Lam. I absolutely love this card in CDM. In terms of left back, right back, he's good. But if I can have the option, CDM will always be the choice for this man. So we've got three heroes left that we're going to run through right now. Nakata, a new hero, non-icon now, which is very interesting. Does add a good value throughout, but unfortunately falls a little bit short compared to Okocha in that, in that cam role. He is an absolute dynamite. We've used him in draft and we've come up against him a, a couple of times. And he is just beautiful to play with. Very smooth on the ball. Can go up front, can go in the midfield, can go left mid if you really wanted to. Absolute unit. Park Ji Sung, again, a new hero in the game. Absolutely gassed to get this card. He will be a great addition to that Man U lineup and most definitely in that A category. Now, coming into Valverde, a Champions League road to the knockout. What a card. 708k value. He has already um, got the lengthy category on him with the architect. And I don't know why we're stopping there. He is most definitely in that S category with obviously the architect. He's already got 90 pace. He then goes up to 89 passing, 93 physical, 82 defending already, which is the head and accuracy that's lowering it down. We've got dribbling on him. Not necessarily the greatest agility balance, but it works. Decent amount of long shot and shot power. He is a phenomenal centre mid. Now we'll run through a few of the B category players in terms of icons. Veron is there, Paul Scholes, Schweinsteiger, Pires. And if I look around, Figo's good. Uh, Key, oh no, I think Keane is an A this year. And I'll explain why when we go through him. Jabby Alonso, unfortunately a B. Um, Seedorf, incredible. Xavi is a mix, to be honest. I think for me, he is in the, the in-between of B and A. I just think the passing on him is absolutely exquisite. Very much like Skulls, but with Xavi, I don't know if it's the dribbling as well that just adds that value. The 93-92 combo, maybe not a lot of pace, but his passing and agility is absolutely spot on. Which leads us on to Keane. A weird one, because honestly, he the card again looks like he shouldn't be very good. But every year he surprises me, and I don't know what it is. He just always seems really, really efficient on the game he's in the positions he's got the aggression he's got the strength doesn't necessarily have the shooting which is fine for a box to box can add a little bit of pace to him you can go with the shadow which will obviously give him what 82 82 pace as well as 90 defending a solid card Makalele coming in as a 305 icon architect for the lengthy. He's got to go in this in this A category most definitely. Very much on the defensive end. Can be a CM and right mid if you want. I think definitely for his mid, you are looking definitely at a CDM. His base card is the right mid. So I think it is a comparison that all of them can be them sort of positions. So then we're down to the fair few. We've got Zanetti who can be a CDM. We've got Zambrotta who can be a right mid. Seedorf, I, I don't even know why I even questioned him to be honest. He is S category 100%. We then have Socrates, a solid cam. Most definitely looking very top end in this game. Coming in at 494 with the lengthy with an architect. I think this year... I, I think you've got to go with the S category with him. I think last year, with obviously not the length he'd be in a meta, he was kind of in that top end, but not quite meta meta. This year, I just think he's absolutely phenomenal. With the Zambrota, I think you're mainly attributing him to a free at the back. So, for instance, you could put Roberto Carlos as a left mid and Zambrota as a right mid. Them to come back to make almost a five at the back in a free at the back formation, if you get what I mean. But... Again, still will do a job. Not necessarily high on the attack. So, unfortunately, he will sit in this A. If it's a right back and a defender category, he is definitely S tier every single day of the week. Zanetti coming in, got to be an A as well. I think the CDM role always suits him. Tall, got the strength, got the aggression, as well as then having the defending. 
is a solid card. Luis Figo up next. No lengthy. Cam 88 at 345. I think most definitely has to be in this A. He is a very good player. And this year, his uh, right wing card is great at the attack. But this Cam card is going to have the agility, not necessarily the balance. It's got the shooting, the passing, a little bit of physicality, as well as pace. I think most definitely a great a great addition as a cam. Petit is next with an 88 CDM, and he has to kind of follow Zanetti, to be honest. They're both always very much linked in terms of that DM role. 6-1, he gets the lengthy with an anchor, which is always perfect. You get him with 79 pace, 92 defender, 94 physical. Again, he's going to be a big old unit in that middle that you can potentially drop between the lines to almost make a 6 at the back or a 5 at the back, depending on your formation. Nedved is the penultimate card. He is a free 399k card left mid that can't go lengthy but we've got great pace good shooting passing dribbling all at the top end there even a bit of physicality he is an all-round baller it is a shame that this card isn't transitionable into a cam but i think most definitely you are looking in between i'd say an a and an s i think maybe if we get into the prime and i think he stays around about the same i think that card could be the s but unfortunately he's just going to miss out in terms of what we've got up here just here and then the final card is going to be our man Perlo. Again, very much like Xavi. I cannot say Xavi's got great agility balance as well as then the passing and not put him in that A category as well. He's got no pace whatsoever. Shooting is a little bit better. Physicality is non-existent. Defending can't happen, but the dribbling and the passing work really well. You wouldn't have both of them in the same team. You'd definitely have a Conte, a Tonali, a uh, Renato Sanchez, somebody heavily DM relying from this corner kind of section to link him so that always he is the outlet going to the wingers going to the strikers and just getting that ball absolutely fed through and that is the tier list from s to a to b to c to d i don't i think we had two in a in, in s so uh, in d sorry so we've got Br uh, bruno and cruz unfortunately we'll make it off the list next time and again mount muller Every time we do these, I think once a month, we will obviously update. And some players may go, even if necessarily they're in the B category now. Especially gold cards, they will be replaced with their new card as such. And some of them may just fall off a little bit at a time. And I may even almost pre-add some of these cards unless they've been updated in their rating i maybe then just already fill it in and then we just add the new cards to it so let me know what you'd prefer if you've made it this far but if you have enjoyed this video make sure you do like and subscribe and check out the videos on the left they will give you some banger ideas and have been chosen specifically for you but from that i'll catch you all for the next one